Well, good morning once again. And this is Expressive. And as you've seen across the media, all media platforms, uh, the month of March is touted as a heritage month. And we here have not done anything different. That is what we've done. And, but today we are going to drift a bit from the whole Made in Ghana product and Made in Ghana services to successful Ghanaians who have sold Ghana, who have represented Ghana very well in Ghana, and of course, beyond. And so, you know, normally we do that on the show, but today we're, we're just drifting away a little bit. And today my guest is somebody that you may not have heard much or even seen much of him, but I bet you after our conversation, uh, you take notes. You definitely will take notes and you revise your notes all over again. Uh, my guest is Mr. Andrew Asamoah. And Mr. Andrew Asamoah is the executive chairman of ANC Development Company Limited at the owners of ANC Mall here at East Legon. So if you're in Accra, hmm, you definitely know ANC. You have to visit ANC. It's also the very first mall in Ghana. And that's the least of his achievements. So just stay with us. We'll get to know him more and get to learn more about him. Mr. Andrew Asamoah, welcome to the show. It's good to have you here. Thank you very it's much. It's really a privilege. Thank you. And listen, guys, we're going to uh, take this interview in three different folds, okay? You know how we do it on Mondays. Normally on Mondays, uh, we we'll talk to people, great people, and we learn more about them, of course, from their story, their motivator. So we'll do the same with uh, Mr. Samoa. He's going to tell us about his life and, you know, some motivation so we can learn from it. The young ones can tap into his glory as well. We'll also talk about World Health Organization because he worked there for 30 good years. So we'll talk about it and, you know, matters arising about that. We'll also talk about Ghanaians who have represented Ghana in Ghana and beyond. How well, you know, we have done that as a country. So, Mr. Sama, welcome once again. Thank you very But I much. must say, your resume is impressive. Thank like, you. You've done a lot. When I was reading, I was like, hey, one man. Wow. That's very, very, very impressive. You're a barrister. You're the owner of ANC Mall. Um, you are the former director of World Health Organization. You are serving uh, as a board director on various, you know, boards, uh, as well as uh, Otun Force, Institute Foundation, uh, Ejaba Labor Commission. It's endless. The list is endless. Let's talk about how you got there, how you were able to get to these heights. Yeah, you know, I must say I was a bit lucky. You know, in life, it's a combination of hard work and luck. Mm. Because I got the opportunity to work with the World Health Organization in my 20s. Mm. I was sent to the original office for Africa mm. in Congo Brazzaville. And uh, I started from the bottom, run through the ranks, uh, till I reached the highest possible I could reach in the system. And I moved from Congo Brazzaville, I went to Nigeria, I went to Geneva, I traveled all over the world. It was a very, very good experience, mm. and I was very lucky to mm. have got that opportunity. Mm. Mm. And tell us how well you represented Ghana. When you were there, were you thinking Ghana, or you were thinking Andrew Asama? <laughs> uh, no, when you are there, mm. you know, in the UN system, uh, you come in on the quota of your country, mm. and so you are more or less representing your country, because after a certain number of Ghanaians have been employed, no more Ghanaians can have a quota to come in. Mm. And then when you go there, just because you are a black person working in the midst of people from all nationalities, you really have to work very, very hard. Mm. Because I always tell my friends who come that when you are black, you are considered guilty mm. until you prove yourself not, not guilty. guilty. Whereas the others, are considered not guilty until they prove themselves guilty. So when you go in, they don't trust you. But I must say, from where I started and where I reached, mm. I think uh, I worked hard and I was also very lucky. Mm. And I happened to be sometime at the right place mm. at the right mm. time. Mm. Mm. Um, I like the fact that you said you, you spoke about being lucky and all of it. We'll come to that. But how well, per your experience, how well do you think Ghanaians who are working outside Ghana, who have the opportunity to work outside Ghana, have represented Ghana? Uh, I must say, Ghanaians, when they go out, 
they are very hard working mm. and they have a very likable personality mm. so when Ghanaians go out in the international arena they are very well liked mm. and I think we have something with us we are not aggressive mm. we are hard working I don't know when we are here. We don't work as hard as when we get there. That I don't understand. We think we are home, so we are okay. Yeah, we don't work so hard, yes. Mm. But when we are outside, we represent. We work very hard. Mm. You spoke about being lucky. Let's talk about your growth. Uh, I, you're a barrister. Yes. Why did you put the... Are you still a barrister? Do you still work as a barrister? Uh, I still work as a barrister in the, in the, because now I'm the chairman of the National Labor Commission. Right. So all the issues of the worker, the labor, mm. and things, uh, we have to educate. Mm. And when you come to the National Labor Commission, if you are not happy with mm. any decision you, we take, you go to the Court of Appeal. Mm. So in a sense... Uh, I'm doing a lot that. of labor law, mm. and this is mm. something I used to do also when I was in the in Dobrecho mm. as a director of human resources. Mm. I was also the legal person mm. representing the organization mm. when we have issues with our staff. Right. Looking at your background, I, I mean, I'm I'm wondering what actually engineered the establishment of ANC more. Okay. When, as I said, luckily. Because I joined the UN mm. quite young, uh, when I was 55, I've already reached the top level I could reach, and I've made many years of service. So I decided to come back to Ghana. Mm. And when I decided to come back to Ghana, I just wanted to do something which I will have the full responsibility. Because when you are working in an organization, sometimes you may make recommendations, it will not be accepted. Mm. But when you are on your own, whether you win or you fail, it's on, it's you. on you. So, And I've always been interested in real estate. Mm. I've always been, I built my first house at the age of 26. Uh, so real estate has been my thing. So when I came, honestly, it was the only way to go. Mm. And uh, also... The land where ANC is situated, I bought it 10 years before I came. So wow. I have planned that I wanted to do something. You bought the land 10 years ago? Before I came before you to came Ghana. Before you came to Ghana? Yes. Okay. But at, at the time when you were building ANC mall, there was nothing like a mall in Ghana. That's no. the first no. mall ever. No. How did that dream come that, oh, I want to do something like a shopping arcade? or so? How did that come about? Uh, having traveled all over the world mm. and having been to places like uh, even Zimbabwe, South Africa, mm. they all have malls. So I didn't see why Ghana, with a population of 30 million, should not have a mall. Mm. So I thought we deserved to have a mall. Mm. But I must say that it was not very easy because the banks were not sure whether having a mall would succeed. In their mind, in Ghana, our mall is the Makola. Yeah. They didn't think this European yeah. type of mall yeah. will work. But I believe it will work because if it's working in other African countries, why will it not work here? Mm -hmm. So I believe it will work. But so do you think the more concept you introduced here in the country has impacted us positively in terms of, you know, how we shop, our shopping lifestyle as Ghanaians? It's really hard because, for example, at ANC, you know, we are like um, a neighborhood mall. Mm. If you go to ANC, even 2 o'clock in the night, it's full. Because mm. people spend their time there, they go to the restaurant, they go and watch their football, uh, they go to the gym, they bring the children to the playground. So it, it, there's activity all around. And when you live in East Lagoon, instead of taking the, going to other parts, it's so easy for you that within 10 minutes, you are at A and C, <laughs> you see the playground, you bring your children mm. there, you dump them there, you go there. You know, so I think um, 
is 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 it, it has helped a lot. Right. Let's talk about ANC more. I know that uh, it hosts Ghanaian tenants and foreigners as well. Mm -hmm. And Ghanaians, we are tagged as very, you know, hospitable people. Mm -hmm. And we love people. Mm -hmm. As chairman of ANC mm -hmm. more, what has been the attitude of Ghanaians towards these foreigners who are tenants there as well? No, I find the Ghanaian tenants very good. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, I work with them. Right. I don't see them as tenants. Mm. I see them as partners. Right. So sometimes I would rather say, look, if you add this to what we are doing, it, it will work, work well. So we work together. And I find the Ghanaian tenants to be very good in the sense that they are here to stay. Mm. You know, the, uh, Europe, the external tenants, they can come. If the economy is not good, they can leave. <laughs> yeah. But the Ghanaians, they we have nowhere here. to go. So we are all together. Mm. So I find it very good. And we are one of the, 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 one of the few. Uh, this is that we really encourage a lot of diversity mm. in the tenants mix. Yeah. Having worked and traveled in Ghana, you know, across the globe, how... Do other countries see Ghana? What do they know Ghana for? Uh, per your experience? Per my experience, people like Ghana. You know, all my friends who come to visit me, mm. all the people I meet, they all like Ghana very much. They say Ghanaians are... We, we, we like people. We, we are warm. Mm. We invite people mm. to their homes, you know. So Ghanaians are very much... Uh, liked mm. everywhere and the people i know foreigners in ghana they are always very happy mm. you know there's no too much aggression mm. uh, there's no too much uh, uh, robbery and things and Ghanaians are normally very nice nice people but pay your experience do you think there should be an international step to actually push ghana to that step because it will come back you know to help us as in push the things we have in ghana let's sell ghana to the world should we make a conscious effort to do that or we should just leave it to time no that's what we have to do because if we don't do we will only be suppliers of raw materials we have to push the ghana agenda mm. we have to try to add value to all our products i mean the, the, if you'll be shocked that the cocoa industry, mm. the chocolate cocoa industry, is about 100 billion business in the whole world. But Ghana Ivory Coast, which contributes all the raw materials, we don't get 10% of the total value. Whereas if we have added value, we'll get more. So I think what we have to do is to try to add value to all our products. But if we continue to su supply the raw materials, I don't think we'll go very far. Talking about adding value, how were you able to convince banks to invest in ANC more? Or let me first ask, how did you build it? Did you get funds from the bank or it was funds from your exploits all over the world? Okay, when I came, naturally, I tried to work with the banks. I had the whole blueprint mm. of ANC put together, and uh, I approached several banks. But what I found out is, one, they were not very sure mm. whether it will work, because it, there was nothing to show. Yeah. So they were skeptical. Two, they were a bit unconvinced, not sure whether I'm not a typical businessman. I just came from outside and I said, I just want to do business and you want all this money, money. from us. And number three, the problem also I found was that the interest rates were too high. Mm. I mean, I couldn't see taking a loan and paying 40%. How will I be able to pay back? So with a combination of difficulties of getting local resources uh, and other things, what I decided to do is to do ANC in phases. Mm. 
even though I have the whole blueprint, I saw that I couldn't do it. Right. So I have to sell some of my properties outside and say, okay, let me try and do phase one, mm. which is the main mall. And from the phase one, then we move to the fitness center, we move to the first offices. So this is how I did it. So you can see that unlike a crown mall, ANC did not come as one entity immediately. We continue to add to it mm. Mm. up to now. Now we finish. Mm -hmm. So ANC. now is the complete. Now we've done everything. And indirectly, it also helped because we went phase by phase. Mm. We, 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 we were able to appreciate the market better and we were able to adapt to what we thought was needed. Mm. Whereas if you have done everything at one go, there will have been mistakes. So in a way, it was also good that we didn't have the resources to do to it do all everything. at one go. Mm -hmm. yeah. But during, you know, you building there, you built half and you were going on to the other, at did you at any point want to stop and start something else because you didn't get the money upright and say that, okay, I didn't get, say, $100,000 or whatever to start ANC more. Let me just leave it and go somewhere. Did you ever think of giving up? No, no, I never thought of giving up. I was so positive mm. that it will work. That, I mean, if I wanted to go out, I would not have started at all because the banks were not supportive. Even my friends were discouraging me that, exactly. look, you worked so hard in the UN, you've come back, the money you have, just put it in a fixed deposit. Yeah, Why do you want to go through <laughs> all this? So if I was inclined, mm. it was from the beginning. Mm. But once I started, there was no going back. Mm. And especially when I saw the effect of the face face, mm. it encouraged me to push and more. move. So. A lot of young people now uh, are a bit confused. I say confused because we don't know whether is this starting a business for me or is working for somebody or what exactly, how, how exactly do I know my purpose, you know, on this earth? How do I know what I'm supposed to do? Am I supposed to be working for somebody for the rest of my life or I'm supposed to start something? How do you as a young person get that intuition that, listen, this is what you have to do? Uh, I think the problem I see mm. is that we don't have the institutions and the structures to help young people mm. start business. Because what I've noticed in some parts of the world, if you go to Malaysia and other things, mm. when you have a good project and you take it to a government district, they review it. If they are happy, they support. then they support you. I have a friend in Malaysia who went and started a laboratory testing. Now he has about 18 laboratories. And when he went, he didn't have a penny. Wow. The problem here for young people is the capital to start business. Mm. Because even if the bank will give you, sometimes the interest rates are atrocious. Yeah. You know, there's this young guy I was mentoring, and he was so hardworking. He has his company, mm. and he had built about two houses in East Legon. Mm. He was doing very well. Mm. One day he came to me, and he was having problems. What was happening? He had gone to take a loan, mm. and he was paying 6% a month. Wow. 6%? 72% a year. And every time he fails to pay immediately then the amount oh, so when he came and i saw how much he owed it was more than all his assets so this is one of the problems mm -hmm. which is makes it very difficult for young people to go into business here mm. i think we have to improve the structures we have to push to get i mean sometimes People will say, oh, Ghanaians, we are not very hardworking. Oh, you see all these uh, Lebanese yeah, and things. They come, they are doing well. What you forget, some of them take loans from outside where they are paying 2, 3, 4%.
So if somebody comes in to do a business where he's paying 2-3%, oh, and yes, you are doing the same business and you are paying 40%, how can you work? So sometimes, not that Ghanaians are lazy. The system, the system makes it very difficult. You know, mm. even though I must say that sometimes, some of us also, when we go into business, I, I had a young guy who's my friend. I like young people. I mentor them. <laughs> he started his business. He was doing very well. The next time he came to me, he was building a house. I said, no, let the money work for you at a point. But if you use part of your capital to build a house, so he's building a house. He has not been able to finish the house. His money is in the house, and his business cannot move forward because he has put all his money. So sometimes we also... So what we is the ideal thing to do if you have, say, 50,000 Ghana CDs or $50,000 in yeah. your hands? Mm -hmm. You want to build a house, you want to start a business. What's the ideal thing? If you want to build a house, uh, if, you want to, if you are working mm. and you have 50000 and you want to build a house while you are working, it's okay. Mm. But if you want to go into business, then put all your capital in the business. And as the business moves at a point, mm. but you don't start a business in two years, you are building a house. You have not finished the building, but half of your capital is in that building. You are still renting a house, mm. and you have a building there which is uncompleted. <laughs> so these are some of the mistakes, of mistakes sometimes we make. You know, some people start business, immediately they want to buy a flashy car. It's not necessary. Mm. It will come later. Mm. There will be a point that you can take cash and buy a Rolls Royce. Mm. But don't use the business funds to buy a Porsche car. Buy yourself a nice car, do your business, work very hard. There will be a point that the business itself will give you a car. So sometimes there's we some miscalculation from things. us. Yeah. Uh, and I, as I say, sometimes also getting the funding is very difficult. Because if somebody in America is doing business, you can go to the bank and pay 2% and get a loan. Mm. How will you be able to compete with that person when you are paying 40 percent so these are some of the problems so it's not that Ghanaians are lazy it's just that the systems are not well defined mm. it's difficult the interest rates are very high and therefore it makes business very difficult wow let's talk about the attitude entrepreneurs or businessmen and women should have I mean as they are starting their business maybe three key attitudes to be a successful businessman honesty honesty truthfulness Truthful. discipline honesty truthfulness and discipline. discipline you show uh, you should do a business to a point that people have so much trust in you that they don't want to begin to sign when you talk they accept your word mm, mm. but a lot of young people too much interested in immediate gains. Yeah. You know, you open a door, you have to go on and... But sometimes immediately we want to make money mm. and we spoil everything. Mm. But if you are honest in the people you deal with, I mean, the people I started with. who are supplying me are the same people supplying me wow. today. Most of the workers I started working are still working with me today. Nice. You have to treat the workers like your children. Mm. You know, you don't have a business and because it's a worker, no, you don't do that. I have children working with me. I treat them exactly the same way as I treat my workers. I treat my children have no right to do anything which a worker cannot, cannot do. do, another worker cannot do. You treat everybody do. equally. Everybody equally. We'll come back uh, to chairman, but we're going for a quick break. When we come back, we're still having a conversation with the chairman of ANC More. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>
are you looking for two or three bedroom luxurious apartments at unbeatable prices alphabet city is a brand new gated community located in the top of the serene sakumono lagoon feeling like splurging a little check out our exclusive all detached house gated community le jardin symphonique next door sizes range from cozy three bedrooms to luxurious five bedrooms we at waylead are committed to provide you with the best building quality and value for your money in fact we are the proud recipient of 2019's quality property firm award we are offering discounts up to 10 percent for early bird buyers call us now on 0240-111119 or 050-449-9999 to secure your dream home the abc of home sweet home as a man on a mission I am constantly on the move. My work takes me to different places from all walks of life. In the process of time, I have met many successful people with different backgrounds and with different drives. One thing has been common among them all. Like me, they don't compromise on quality. Which is why each day as I leave off and face the world, I drive straight to the one place I know I can reach you over the day because I am assured of quality fuel at an affordable price. Over the mouth of the salute. Let me tell you. 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 Let me tell I know he's ready because the love I give him grows with him. This is better than approved by the FDA. Get your Milo FC Barcelona Limited Edition pack now before the final whistle blows on this promotion. This advert is FDA approved. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're still here with the executive chairman of the ANC Development Company Limited, Mr. Andrew Asamoah. Uh, lots of messages coming through for you, you. But <laughs> we'll start with, you mentioned when you were talking about the uh, discipline, you know, being truthful and being honest, you mentioned your children. And so I can gather, I can say that ANC is predominantly a family run business but people don't actually agree with they're like oh when you're starting a business and you involve family family want to spoil everything family don't want you to progress how effective has it been for you okay when you talk about anc mm. what is anc anc is andrew and cecilia okay me andrew, and my wife beautiful. we've been married for 50 years nice we've been all over the world together nice so is for us. Mm. So when we started, mm. we decided to bring some of our children back. They were mm. all in the United States. And so far, two of them have come who are helping us. Mm. One of them came earlier. He worked through the ranks. Now he's the MD mm. and he's the center manager. The other one has come. He's just within the ranks. Some mm. people are higher than mm. him. Like I said, it's not because you are my son that you'll be giving. No. You go wow. through the rank like mm. everybody. Mm. Mm. Now, if you don't bring the children in mm. at the right time, let them go through the ranks. You finish, the day you go, the business will collapse. I know so many businesses. The children were outside. They were doing their own thing. Then when the man died, even when they come, they don't know the business. But if they come under your tutelage, mm. you train them, you discipline them, mm. they get your vision, mm. then 
they can continue when you are no more there. Mm -hmm. It's a two-edged sword. sword. Sometimes you bring the family in, and if you are not strong and disciplined, they will do what they like. Mm -hmm. And we've seen so many mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. But you can be firm and disciplined. You know, because if you are working with me, and you come to the office at 8 o'clock, and my son is coming at 10, will you be happy? No. If you come at 8, he comes at 8. eight. Wow. So there's discipline. Discipline is the most important thing. So that everybody, so my my workers are so happy mm. because they know that I don't treat my children any different mm. from the way mm. I treat mm. them. And when it comes to a monument, what they deserve, they get it according to their position, not because they are my children. Mm. 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 So that is the most important thing. If you can be disciplined, bring the children in, and that's what the Indians, that's what they do. They start small, 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 and then when they go, another person will take over. So bringing family in is not wrong, right. but you have to bring them at the right time. If you die mm. and they take over, they don't even know oh, what the business is all about. So I think it's important. it's important you bring it in, but you have to be very disciplined. And the discipline is only not only on them, you yourself. You have to dis be disciplined so that your staff also know that the boss is also following what mm -hmm. we have to do. Indeed, discipline is the key word and the underlining factor in this interview. But uh, let's talk about the way forward for ANC. What next for ANC? I mean, when I hear ANC, for me, I think, oh, is it just the mall? No. What else? ANC, we had a block of offices at Joro. We have some residential buildings all over East Legon. Now, by June mm. this year, we're going to open our next mall called ANC Corner. Oh, wow. ANC Corner is adjacent to the East Legon Police Station. Okay. And ANC Corner is not going to compete with ANC mm. Mall mm. because the anchor will be a company that deals in building materials, materials everything from a to z everything you need in a building like we have something like that in america home, home depot mm. actually the company coming is from the united states mm. so any if you want to build from cement to iron rods to wood ah. to plumbing to electrical to everything ah. you get it in one place ah. That's going to be ANC corner. And then there will be furniture, mm -hmm. there will be restaurants, mm -hmm. there will be other things. By June this year, we finish. Mm -hmm. Then our next project is called ANC Village. ANC Village is on the way to, you know, Very View University. Yeah. It's, it's th that is OEB. That is a big. That's about five times ANC. Wow. And then. It's going to be a village, residential, commercial, mm. everything will be mm. there. Mm. And there also, we started in collaboration with some residential district that we started building there. So ANC Village is our third project, but ANC Corner is going it's to next. be finished this year. Wow. Yeah. We can't wait. Those of us who are planning on building, yes. we'll just walk into yes. ANC yes. Corner yes. and get everything. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because now when you want to build, they, they will say, oh, you have, you to, have to go to here. here, you have to go here. here. No, oh here you go, One you stop. buy everything, and the workers come and pick it, and you go. So wow. no cheating, nothing. Nothing. Yes. Wow, well, wish you all the best. Thank you very but much. But before you go, I have a couple of questions here. And the first, let me pick the first one. Uh, how, how, how do mentees come to you? Do you handpick them, or you, you are willing to mentor anybody with the right mentality when it comes to business okay i'm in the rotary okay. and the rotary we have rotaractors these are the young ones uh, then sometimes i'm invited to speak to mm. young people mm. and and sometimes people come to me for so i have a lot of young friends who come they want to do business then i'll help and guide them advise them what mm. to do mm. and things so that's how. I know somebody that is really, really focused. I think he needs to in his life. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> the last question, if you're working in a company and you're not being paid, what are you supposed to do? Not being paid? Yes, you've not been paid. Are you supposed to leave the work or still work for the company? No, if you're not being paid, uh, there have to be a reason why you are not being paid. Mm. If you are satisfied that maybe the company is going through difficult times and all of you tighten your belts, it's understandable. Right. But if the CEO is buying the latest car and he can't pay you, <laughs> that one is not acceptable. <laughs> Now that, you have to leave. That's why you bring... No, don't leave. Bring them to the National Labor Commission. Right. You take care of that. Right. You cannot be living fat and you are employee. No, you don't do that. Mm -hmm. But if all of you, there are problems with the company, you call them together, you discuss it, you show them and they understand and you all sacrifice. But not that one man is sacrificing and the, the other, other is one enjoying. is enjoying. No, no. That <laughs> okay, so uh, your question has been answered. Please, you can join us. Uh, before we go... Since you work with the WHO World Health Organization, and we know that the vaccine is also... Have you taken your job, though? I've taken my you job. Have. I've taken my first job. I'm waiting for the A second one. A lot of Ghanaians are still thinking whether or not to take it. You, 30 years with the WHO, what do you have to tell us about the vaccine? No. Are you encouraging Ghanaians? I'm encouraging Ghanaians. You know WHO have approved the vaccine. Uh, a lot of people are a bit worried because the vaccine... Mm -hmm was produced too quickly, all the vaccines. Mm. Normally, it takes about five years to produce a vaccine. But because of the pandemic, mm. a lot of this thing came. But before the vaccine can be sold, mm. WHO will give the, this thing. Approval. And now, mm. even if you look the the one coming here, Oxford, this thing, which people are talking about, mm -hmm. European Union, they have now gone back, they are using it. And just today, United States of America has approved the vaccine. Mm. You know, no vaccine has no little side effect. You know, yeah. but the important thing is the bigger picture. We've seen people, I've seen my friend dying. But at least with the vaccine, you cannot be in a situation where it will kill you. Mm. So I encourage everybody to take the vaccine. Even you young one, you should, we should take, take it. it. Thank you so much, <laughs> Mr. Andrew Asama, <laughs> Chief Executive of ANC Development Company Limited. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you. I really enjoyed myself. Thank you. And it's time for our expressive celebrate and we celebrate some amazing people. I want to say happy birthday to the final year medical students at Central University. God bless you and give you long life and we are so proud of you. We love you. This is from Della. And Della works here at Metro TV. We say happy birthday to you. Uh, she has a very <laughs> fine Ewe name. <laughs> uh, let me get the name in a bit. Marian Selassie Sevo. Mariam Selassie Sevo. Happy birthday to you, Marian Selassie Sevo. And this is from Della here at Metro TV.